What is up, DTube? So today I want to talk about the topic. So today it's day two out of 100 days of Hex. The last the last 100 days of Hex in the Hex launch phase here in 2020. And today I want to talk about this very, very exciting topic that I want to call what about the old what about the old elite and uh i wanted to <laughs> so yesterday i talked a little bit about the potential of an american collapse and the main things that i talked about in that video was this aspect that a lot of those banks that should have failed 10 years ago they got bailed out which is one of the reasons why we got a lot of cryptos because a lot of the people got pissed off but that chapter should have, those things should have failed, but they didn't. Like, they got bailed out. Now, now we're in this weird situation where we have an even bigger problem. Because the, it wasn't dealt with uh, properly the, 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 uh, the last time, you know. So, so I look at these stories, like, in the world and... and um, so I'm 27 uh, and um, and I saw a lot of the uh, problems in the world that kind of uh, popped up around 2015 and I've been seeing kind of chaos kind of escalate in, uh, in many many ways when I've been kind of looking at things and so on and um, I mean what about the old elite? Let's talk a little bit about this. What about the old elite? Well, now first of all, are we creating a new elite with crypto? I would say so with Hex Trustless Interest. <laughs> because if you understand uh, what Hex allows you to do is it allows you to be your own bank and create your own money. This is still a new concept for most people. Most people don't know about it still that you can create your own money and print your own interest. So the tools and the powers that uh, Hex gives to consumers, yes, it seems like it's creating a new elite. And, um, and it's interesting uh, because I know some pretty cool elite people, I would say. Uh, I mean, you can, I mean, maybe I can call them a little bit elite. And... Uh, the problem is, if I talk a little bit about um, Hex to them, they don't seem to like it so much. It doesn't seem like the status quo like it so much, this idea of printing trustless interest to humans. It seems like they see that as a threat to, um, to the way they've been kind of doing things. But it seems like it's kind of inevitable that this, uh, this uh, new thing is kind of arriving here. And I'm very curious about the old elite, how they will kind of, um, how they will kind of behave. Now, first of all, with the elite, I there are different groups of uh, the elite. I would say they are, they are not like one uh, one kind of group. You know, I think uh, they're kind of like the good guys and the bad guys. And um, I think a lot of the good guys kind of wanna, they kind of probably love this a concept of hex and trustless interest to masses, to the masses, and uh, this concept of digital gold and like uh, that people get more freedom away from banks. And then I think there are maybe this other, let's let's call it the bad faction of the elite that kind of wants, they want dominance and control, and uh, I think they're kind of gonna fail. Like the 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 the, 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 the section of the elite. They kind of want dominance and control. I think they're kind of going to fail the next uh, 10 years. And the main reason for that is because it's it's not in tune uh, with the times so much. Uh, so we have this amazing consumer technology that's coming out and that's always improving. New tokens, new cryptos, more better powerful smartphones that empower humans. All of these tools are kind of designed to liberate a human, a human being, and kind of free them up. And uh, the kind of like the energy frequency of, uh, let's say, the bad, um, the bad, the, <laughs> the let's call it like the the bad, um, uh, the bad group of the elite. The energy frequency they seem to be in is more like 
they seem to be at a, like a lower, I would say, energy frequency or something like that, where it's not really about empower people that much. But then we take the good section of the elite and they seem... So the good section, they seem to kind of love this idea of like moving more into truth and uh, kind of expose a lot of nonsense that... Um, that hasn't really been exposed that much in the past, not especially in like the main in a mainstream way. So if you look at the elite right now, uh, a lot of the news organizations and everything, they're used reporting lies. Like they're not reporting on anything truthful. So lies are basically mainstream in in the current old elite system, and it doesn't really seem like that's gonna work that well. Like, if you look at what humans really want now, is they kind of want truthful things. So that it seems like the new kind of elite that's kind of emerging is super much into truth, super much into exposing um, exposing things. And uh, yeah, I think truth can kind of work as, a, as, a, as an addictive drug for this kind of new elite that's kind of growing up because um, they really don't have that much to lose. Like most of them don't ha own a house. They don't own a girlfriend. They don't own anything. So, I mean, you know, truth can be a drug to them. So it's gonna be interesting to see if a lot of the old elite, if, if they are gonna make the flip towards more truth, you know? Um, I think many of them are. I, I think many of them are kind of tired of um, the old system where a lot of it is just nonsense. There's so many lies. And uh, I don't think lies can, can hold up here in the long term. If, if you look at people, um, a lot of leaders that have like social media pages, they have started to disable their comments on their social media pages. And you, you wonder why, like, why are they disabling comments? Why don't they want to engage in discussion? It's kind of shady, right? Like, why, 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 I mean, if they're in a leadership position, they should probably be able to have an open discussion about things. But it seems like a lot of the old elite, they don't, they don't seem to be so in tune with the times. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of drama when, when you move more into truthful things. So I think Hex plays a very important role in all of this because I think the finance plays a pretty huge role in all of this that when people kind of, uh, when we kind of get over this bump of like, um, this bump of ignorance that we have uh, about money, uh, people don't understand so much about how money works. And when people are starting to realize, oh, wait a sec, we can actually print money now with smart contracts. When you start to open up that rabbit hole that um, that Hex has opened up, it seems like eventually everyone's going to print their own money. Uh, and, um, and, 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 um, and when people get a taste for that, uh, printing their own value, I don't think they're going to stop. Like, I don't think they're going to go back to the old uh, kind of system where they can't print their own sort of money. I mean, I think that once you get used to the Hex lifestyle, I don't think you want to go back uh, to not be able to print your own interest because, yeah, it's just lame. Like, it's like, it's a different energetic frequency, I would say. Uh, I think Hex is, um, yeah, it's a different energetic frequency. Uh, th this concept of uh, kind of abundance in many ways. That is uh, something that we say a lot of the, um, the let's say, bad section of the current elite, uh, they're not so much, they're not so much in tune with this abundance concept because it kind of goes against <laughs> this uh, power and kind of control paradigm, which has been a dominant rule for the last thousands of years on planet Earth. And, um, and when people don't kind of believe in that thing anymore, and, and when when it's like a boring story, they're gonna seek better stories. And I like how Hex is an amazing story. This um, that it prints trustless interest, and that it's an innovation on top of that it's a, it's innovating on the Bitcoin model. Bitcoin was like a proof of concept uh, where you um, you had this decentralized network. And now we've realized 
ah, okay, how can we improve on the Bitcoin model by add some clever game theory and some nice share price code and, and put it as a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, we can kind of take all the good stuff from, uh, from Bitcoin, all the security and, and all of those nice things and combine it with some clever game theory and we suddenly have something that's kind of like Bitcoin but better. It's uh, true decentralized, uh, <laughs> true, let's say, digital gold. That's kind of cool how, how you can innovate and kind of build things uh, and, and look at how the, uh, what has, the experiments, what has been done in the past and how you can improve them. And I think Hex, Hex is a really, really interesting story. And I think that Hex is extremely in tune with the times because, um, because you still need some virtual value, right? Uh, and um, you kind of need this uh, value generating uh, machine that is virtual, but that is not tied to the old uh, elite system. So, so we, we are not that super, <laughs> in terms of crypto, we are not super, super close to any kind of mainstream adoption or anything like that, because technology like this, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of experimentation to see what works and what doesn't work. But, and, and it's like, it's, it's something that's kind of annoying with crypto is yeah a lot of stuff has in the past has been kind of scams and a lot of experimentation hasn't really worked that well but then you get the outliers then you get the outlier things where you can have 99.9 percent .9 failure stuff horrible smart contracts horrible things but then once something finally works it's probably going to take over everything and that's kind of like how i feel with um with hex so I've been looking at it, how it's designed and everything, and I can't see anything else. I can't see anything else comes close to be able to uh, compete against Hex. And that is something that's very, very cool. So I would say that in many ways, what kind of makes the Hex story, uh, Hex story very, very interesting is this aspect that, um, this kind of truth aspect that so what Hex has exposed is how horrible a lot of the crypto community are, how ignorant the Bitcoin community are, because they they keep on gatekeeping other cryptos. Even, um, yeah, I mean, they're gatekeeping Hex, and it, it's horrible. Like, they, they're seeing a little smart contract on Ethereum as a threat. And that should probably tell you a lot about insecurity in the crypto community i mean if if a little smart contract on to, on on ethereum yeah they're gatekeeping it and if they are gatekeeping that little thing it seems like uh, hex is exposing a lot of fear and insecurity in the crypto community and in the bitcoin community and it seems like they do not know if they're sitting on a good uh, <laughs> on the best product because if they were sitting on the best product, I don't think they would mind to argue and discuss with hexagons. But everyone that has argued and discussed with hexagons has been crushed. They have not been able to prove that their Bitcoin is better designed than Hex. So Hex, Hex is better designed. Hex is better designed than Bitcoin. That is the, con the logical con con conclusion that I can come to after watching every single video about people that has been critical, that has been basically been critical about Hex. I've, I've been watching every single video and trying to see does anyone actually have some real important point that I missed that actually makes Hex worse designed. But I can't see it at all. Like they, they're, they don't have as good logical reasoning as I have. So, so yeah, the it's gonna be interesting to see how the the old elite how they kind of react when <laughs> when you get the rise and when this smart contract just grows in size and grows and grows and grows. It's gonna be interesting because 
I mean, who is supposed to be addressing something like this that can just grow and grow and grow and grow? And it's very interesting because, yeah, you have this problem with like journalists and so-called reporters. I've been saying how that kind of profession is kind of dying because you kind of you kind of have this problem like who is supposed to have authority to kind of say, oh, this is cool. This is not cool. You see how a lot of these old reporters and journalists, they they do not know anymore many times when they're not thinking for themselves they do not really know where they should seek it seems like they don't know wh wh where, where to look to find truth it seems like yeah it's like one of these weird things where they used to look for authority at some place else uh, someplace else but now they kind of have to think for themselves because everything's kind of out there, like everyone can like study information and data by themselves and they can come up to their own logical conclusion and people are not used to logic. People are not used to thinking for themselves. Usually they're used to someone else thinking for them and, and trust that that kind of data is valid. But um, now it seems like we're kind of in a time here where, where people got to start thinking for themselves a little bit and uh, actually have some integrity and actually stand up for truth uh, and it's like if I look at hexagons they seem to be the most truthful people on the planet uh, and we probably need more of those humans I mean what kind of humans should run things I mean if, we, if we're perfectly logical what kind of humans should be running things what kind of humans should be kind of become the new elite? I would say hexagons because they are obsessed with truth and uh, they love logic and they are nice people. Uh, I'm so I think a lot of the old elite is probably going to be very very happy when um, when when hex grows bigger. Uh, because I think a lot of the old elite, as I said, I think a lot of the old elite that is not obsessed with dominance and control, I think they kind of appreciate Hex because Hex is exposing so much nonsense in the world and I think that that has utility in the world. So that is basically what I wanted to talk about a little bit in uh, in this kind of video. And for me, it's very, very annoying when uh, when people are a little bit critical of Hex and, and they have this like super short term mindset, like they're talking about what happens on a day to day basis or on a week to week basis. You do not understand that most people are locked up for for four years, almost five years. Most people have such an extreme long time horizon. Hex is not designed for short term price performance it's it's designed for long term okay it's designed for long term and um, if the design intention would work yeah it should kind of be a success you know and and if we look at the old data at the moment it has been a major success so yeah it hasn't even existed for one year and it has had an amazing price appreciation that is what the data shows okay you can go and look at the data yourself mm. and uh, i'm i'm very i'm gonna be very very happy when when uh, when people learn the truth about capitalism because a lot of people do not know the truth about capitalism, that you live in a, a capitalism world where if, if you want to innovate, you can kind of innovate. And if you can build an industry around uh, something, you can go and, and try that. So you're free to build a company, try to make an industry around something, try to earn some money, try to use marketing for your product. And um, what's cool about Hex is, is the... Um, just because it's a virtual web-based product, you have very, very interesting ways of being able to experimenting with online marketing of, um, of a web-based product. 
and uh, it's kind of cool also in this time now where everyone basically has a high-end or a, a super good smartphone eventually it makes uh, advertising a, a web-based product cheaper and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how kind of that plays out i mean we see it on youtube how people are making videos and receiving millions of views it's um it's quite resource efficient and, and imagine when you combine that with an amazing product that is actually good for the world where it allows you to basically print your own interest if you can get that to the mainstream masses that would be uh, quite quite fascinating so if you look at advertising i mean every, every advertisement you see about bitcoin it's horrible um it's mainly scammers that are advertising it. They don't have any real... So Bitcoin doesn't really have any vloggers or like influencers that actually care about the kind of vision and uh, the, the core vision of, of Bitcoin. It's mainly now used about price FOMO pumps. They're only talking about the price thing. They're not talking so much about the world or like the core vision of the Bitcoin um and th that's kind of like what people are kind of moving away from bitcoin and uh, are trying to make their own things like smart contracts on top of ethereum that have nicer community and and they also have communities that are getting in from the start and uh, if all of your friends are getting rich that is going to be kind of like a nice social circle to have something that bitcoiners they don't have the same thing because there were very few people that kind of got in 2010 and, and got some coins, coins there. So most of the people are kind of broke and uh, that's just boring, right? That's just boring. So yeah, that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. It's going to be interesting to see how the old elite behaves towards hex. It's going to be interesting to see if we're going to uh, enter mass resistance from some sources. I don't really know. I mean, we have only seen resistance mainly from from uh, crypto sources but maybe the real world actually appreciates this product because it's a good product have a great day dtube